You know, that's a really good question. Can it really charge itself? Here's the setup. This is the Stargate motor. You've seen it in other videos. This is the Quanta Hybrid. You've seen it in another video. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to run the Stargate motor with uh, these capacitors. What I've done here is I've added the addition of this particular capacitor here which looks like a hundred dollar capacitor in relative to the size of these but it's actually that cost the same as, as one of these smaller ones here. The only difference is these charge up to two and a half volts uh, and they're a slow charge and slow discharge capacitor so they have a little bit more microfarads of storage. Uh, this one doesn't have as, as much storage but it can charge up to 16 volts if you can read that. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Yeah, see that? It, it may be a little bit blurry but right in there it says 16 volts DC. So, but what it is, is it's a quick charge and quick uh, discharge type capacitor. So the idea was to put this particular capacitor in series with these here. You can see that uh, these, these capacitors here, it goes negative, positive, negative, positive. So from this positive, I go up to the negative of, of this one here, and then the positive comes back and returns to the axial flux, to the connection that goes up through this high frequency unit down to the axial flux alternator uh, in here. So the theory behind this is with, with this larger capacitor, 16 volt storage plus these when they're charged up uh, two and a half volts times uh, five in series is a uh, 12 and a half volts I've explained that before but they can charge up to you know 13 14 15 volts uh, without uh, harming them so let's just call them let's just call them 14 volts added to the 16 volts so it has a 30 volt overall capacity of, of charge now the idea here is we're going to take these three capacitors here and we're going to attach to the positive here and down here we're going to connect it to this red wire which goes over to the Stargate motor. The black goes to a common ground which is right down here and that's the common ground for the whole system for all the capacitors and the generator and everything. So what we'll do by doing that is uh, you can see right here on the meter, let me make this, this is going to be kind of tough to, to see the readings here. Okay, 7.79 volts is what all these capacitors add up to right now in series because I've drained the system. And we're going to tap in here and just use these three to run the Stargate motor. So that means that the power that we draw from here I've got another meter over here, and we'll test it, we'll check it, connect the meter to the positive here that goes up to that third positive on that capacitor, and we'll just make the connection here on the capacitor, and what are we showing? 4.39 volts, can you see that without the reflect, there it is, 4.39 volts is what we're going to use to run the Stargate motor. Will it really charge itself? I'm thinking the theory behind this is with the addition of this, this quick charge and quick discharge capacitor coupled with these slow in series that this one acts like a, a sponge. It'll suck up the, like a sponge would suck up the water really quick and when you squeeze it, these are like the squeezers. You squeeze it and slowly the water comes back, back out that's what this one, in theory, uh, my understanding, uh, will do for this system. It'll charge up quickly from the axial flux generator instead of the slow charge of these. In other words, if it took five seconds to charge this thing to 16 volts, it'd take about you know two seconds to discharge all that power all at one time. These, it, it would take more like five minutes to charge each of these up. I mean, you know, collectively or individually five minutes and then they'll give off their their uh, uh, they'll discharge over you know uh, ten minutes uh, time five minutes to ten minutes time something like that I mean theoretically relative to the the quick charge of, of this in just seconds uh, versus the minutes of these so uh, 
I'm thinking that the, the charge from the axial flux filling up this and trickling back into these capacitors and just using part of the energy here to run the Stargate motor will the Stargate motor running absolutely very slow with only it's, it's designed to run at 24 volts we're going to run it with whatever that was 4 volts 4.3 volts so it'll run very slow will it be able to run turn the rotor in here generating power with the axial flux to recharge these up higher than their rated charge right now which is uh, 7.85 volts and and build up higher than 7.85 volts if it goes to 9 volts it'll be incredible if it goes to 10 12 and beyond it that would just be fantastic if that's even possible I don't know if that's possible actually I do but uh, we're going to find out, and I'm not going to make any claims on this whatsoever. I'm going to let you draw your own conclusions. But if indeed these capacitors charge up to higher than their 7.85 uh, in series collective voltage rating right now, then that means that this motor should speed up and the RPM should show up here as the increase. You ready? Here it goes. Okay. What's it doing? 116, 120. Oh, 12 volts. Interesting. 13 volts. 132 RPM. What have we changed? Nothing. It's coming up. 142, 44. 17 volts. Look at this increase. This is amazing. Look how fast this is going. 18 volts. 151. So the rotor is speeding up. The capacitors are charging through this closed system. Look at it. <laughs> 154, 155 volts coming up. Or I mean, uh, RP. Let me shut this off for a moment. Okay, let's see what this does. Will it hold or will it drop? It's holding. <laughs> That's the meter about to shut off. <laughs> so it's holding its power. Draw your own conclusion. I know I'm going to get a, a lot of messages on this one, a lot of comments, uh, a lot of things to explain, a lot of things I really can't explain. Um, I'm learning as well as everyone else is on, on this one. It's just I thought I'd show everyone this particular demonstration, uh, experiment, and um, I don't know where it's going to go from here, but uh, at this point I would uh, call it Mm, exciting.